Hey everyone, Joe Conkley in the shop. Last video, we had a question about bridge pin tapers and how do you measure them. Uh, two standard taper measurements are three degree and five degree. And um, one of the most straightforward ways to measure them is this handy little jig here. That's the three degree side. And then the five degree. Basically what we did was take a block of wood that was a little wider here, drill a set of holes, and then take our reamers. Which one is which? Well, I've got them labeled. There's my three degree. My five degree, which was the standard, the only one I had for a long, long time until manufacturers started making uh, the three degree pins. If you just look at the reamers here, you can see that the five degree is a little bit thicker at the top, goes to narrow at the bottom, and the three degree just has that same taper but less of a difference, just, just not as thick at the top. But it's still a little bit, uh, that's easy enough to see, but it can be quite challenging when you're just looking at a pair of pins, which one is which, you know. And one of the first things that I did was to take the pin and just view it against the, the, uh, the but it's very difficult to see. It's very difficult to see. So um, one of the things that we did was to create this jig, like I said, block of wood a little bit wider, series of holes, and then take each hole and ream it with the proper reamer, and then just slice that hole right down the middle so we have this side. So let's take a look here, which one is which. Here's this black pin, and I'm going to compare it to this hole. This one is about the, well, it's actually that one right there. So is this a three degree or a five degree? Anyhow, it's very difficult to see. But if it's a five degree, it should fit rather snugly in there. If it's a three degree, it would be more narrow at the top here. So you can, you know, let me see if I can illustrate this. See that wiggle right there? That tells me that I better look at the three degree side. And when I do that, it fits snug there. Very little wiggle at the top of the bottom. This isn't, you know, super accurate, but it, visually it's pretty easy to tell. So there's, this black pin is a three degree. Let's take took this white pin, put it in that same slot of the three degree. It doesn't fit down as far. And you can see that little bit of wiggle at the bottom. If we try it in the five degree slot, It fits pretty snug. So there you go. And, and when you, uh, even though it's not super accurate, this, this, this visually helps you to see different things. So that one thing is very handy. And what's the big deal between those, that little difference between the three and the five degree pin? Um, this handy little jig can illustrate several things. Basically what it is is a, uh, we just took a bridge and this sandwich here, which is the top and the bridge plate, that sandwich, you know, the bridge, the top and the bridge plate right there at the bridge. And again, did that slice right off there. And um, all we're really trying to accomplish is a very nice coupling between the bridge pin, the string, and this sandwich of wood there so that it's all uh, nice and tight with uh, minimal gaps. And um, that just ensures that that coupling of the string to the guitar is as tight and gap free as possible so that the vibration that the strings, the vibrating string and how it excites the top and moves the top, that energy uh, there is properly transferred to the top so that there is very little energy loss in any gaps there. Um, this jig actually illustrates another uh, bridge pin phenomenon, which is the wear of the bridge plate from the, from the uh, ball ends. 
This first one here illustrates what would be a good, you know, fit or a nice clean fit of the ball end, the string and the bridge pin and that slot in the bridge. You can see the ball end is just sitting right atop the uh, bridge plate with no wear on the bridge plate itself, which tends to pull that ball end into the bridge plate and as it rides up, it can create s several problems. One being the uh, that extra wrap around the string that anchors the ball end can start to ride up over the saddle. And when it does that, because the string is getting pulled up through, when it does that, it can affect the intonation because the, uh, the guitar is intonated, you know, or the, the saddle slot is cut in a very particular spot so that the string itself rides over that saddle like that. And if that um, extra winding creeps up above the saddle, you can get an intonation problem. These two illustrate a fair amount of wear. Um, this one, you can see the ball end has sunken into the bridge plate there and is riding, you know, it's actually seating just below the bridge, well into the top, all the way through the bridge plate. And uh, you could have that problem of the string winding right up there. This is that same problem there where you can see that uh, wear that was created by the ball end, but there's a fix that's been applied here. This is what's called a bridge plate patch or a bridge plate cap. And what it does is it's, uh, um, it's allowing that ball end by putting this piece of, this is uh, ebony, and uh, you can use any number of different uh, woods to put a bridge plate cap or patch on uh, as long as they're nice and hard and will wear well. A lot of times uh, you would put the same material that the plate is made out of just for just visually. We did this one with ebony to illustrate this cap so you can see the difference between the cap and the bridge plate material. But there the ball end is sitting as it is here, nice and fresh and not down in the hole like this one. Um, there are several other methods that you can use to cap the bridge plate or take care of this wear. Um, and uh, the, the cap is one thing. One negative of that type of cap is that it just um, there's more material right here in a very crucial area of the uh, sound production of the guitar where you're trying to minimize the mass of the materials in here to allow the top to uh, vibrate freely, yet you are you definitely have to have enough material there for it to be structurally sound. So uh, we'll do that very soon. How? What are the other ways that you can fix this uh, ball end wear on the bridge plate. Uh, there's a super glue and sawdust method. There's uh, several other things. That'd be another good video. Huh? It's nice how these are, one feeds the other. So anyhow, the bridge pin taper jig, the bridge pin tapered reamers, the five and the three degree pins. Uh, all subtle little things that combine that, that uh, structural integrity with minimal mass and material to allow the guitar to work properly and sound its best. There you go. Thanks for the questions. Keep feeding them to us. It helps us to figure out what to do next in the shop. And uh, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you later.